There's so many tools in the wood. I wonder if these builders even know where all their tools are. Probably not. Welcome back to, you guessed it, more corners. We thought it'd be a good idea to build on the basics to cornering video we made earlier and offer up some more information to the riders that are seeking harder and steeper terrain. So I'm gonna finish getting kitted up and then let's go, shall we? The trail I've chosen today is littered with technical corners and every single one of them has something unique going on. However, with a few adjustments to our riding, I'm sure that we can conquer them all. In the last video, I introduced the low look and lean positions, but I think we should dig a bit deeper into those. Let's also talk about line choices, foot placement, and apply them on the technical trails we have here. Now, what I mean when I say to get low into the bike is that your elbows are out, you've got room to move side to side still as you're cornering, your chin is over your stem, and then your body weight's right here in the middle of the bike. If you find yourself cornering in one of these positions, arms extended, weight over the rear wheel, you've not got a lot of control on the front end there and the bike's gonna be taking you for a ride. You're not taking the bike for a ride. I've just made it to the first technical left-hander here on the trail and I cannot stress to you how important it is to look where you're going. By looking with your eyes where you're going on trail, always trail scanning. It's gonna allow the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the toes to really make a nice corner and follow suit. On this particular section of trail, there's a lot going on. There's slippery roots, slippery rocks. So while it might be easy to kind of get hung up on those features and look straight at those, lift your eyes up and continue on down the trail. It's gonna make a world of difference. Third little piece of this puzzle is leaning the bike, which is gonna be really helpful on this slightly kind of off camber banked corner here. Also a little tip when it comes to leaning your bike, lower your seat. It makes a huge difference in how much room you have to move around side to side, front to back, especially in steep terrain. What you want to do is counterbalance the really lightly weighted bicycle by moving it to the inside of this turn here and then you're shifting your body weight to the outside so that everything's balanced, everybody's riding downhill in control. All righty, moving on. We've got a couple of options right here, so I think it's a good time to talk about line choices. Now, I've talked about this before, but it's always worth talking about again. When you're approaching technical terrain like this, it's a lot easier if you break it down into now and then next. So what am I worried about right here, right now on this trail? Well, I've got the run in here to this nice right-hand corner, but as you can see, it's quite slippery. It's pretty damp today and we've got some rocks. So rather than just following the main line, like 99% of the other riders, I'm actually going to enter the corner on the rider's left line and it's gonna make the whole corner a lot wider, a lot smoother, and I'm not gonna get hung up on all the features in the middle. All righty, great success. We've made it into the line, but what next? Don't celebrate too early about making it into that super sick high left line there because we've got a lot of trail yet to navigate. So always keep your eyes up. Always do the trail scanning that we've talked about before. Same goes with like skiing and driving. It's just part of the game because right here, right now, I've got about three line choices to pick from. So I think I'll try the middle one, but we'll see how it goes. Chances are in tighter and steeper corners, there's not a lot of obvious line choices to choose from, but we can always be more creative and think outside the rut. Try picking lines that open up the terrain. You're gonna get a bigger turning radius, which is gonna feel a lot smoother on the bike and it's gonna help in those jackknife situations. If you're going for a speedy approach, then avoid teeing up the corner and skidding all about. That actually creates a big, sharp 90 degree corner and it kills all your speed. Dedicate the section of trail where you're gonna do your braking before the turn. By throwing in a big fistful of brakes right in the middle of the corner, you're gonna drastically shift your body weight. All that work we did on body positions just gonna go out the window. Because we're cornering and we're not just going down a big chute, a little bit more rear brake can be really helpful, but try not to lock up and start skidding. Think ride, don't slide. 
Rather than using the front brake to really slow us down, the rear brake's more for maintaining your speed and it's a lot less intimidating because you don't have the fear of washing out your front wheel. I'm nearing the end of the trail and I have found a perfect opportunity to talk about foot placement. I know, right? Super sensitive, very touchy subject, but I think we're on that level now, right? I've chosen this particular left-hand corner because we've got this super sad looking little root here. It's been smashed by a number of inside pedals already, and we don't wanna add another scar onto this root. So by lifting up ever so slightly that inside foot, you're gonna skip over this little technical feature here. It's gonna be a lot safer for the rest of your ride. Typically with coaching or just in life in general, I try to steer away from the do this or don't do that method because as long as you're riding and having fun, you're gonna progress and you're gonna have a good time. So don't worry about it too much, but now's a good example of when you could switch things up a bit. Now there are definitely some times when you might want to drop the outside foot. One, when you need to create more traction and grip on the ground, especially in loose or flat terrain. But be careful because the more pressure you put on that outside foot, the more the bike actually wants to stand upright. So this is a very fine line and finding that line only comes with practice. Two, when you're avoiding that tight inner berm and there might actually be some obstacles or features on the inside of the berm that you don't wanna get caught up on. And three, when you're really giving her on that flat, loose terrain and you go full foot out, flat out, just fighting the bike to stay upright. Now, if you don't love doing nose wheelies and all those European switchbacks like myself, then what I actually do a lot of the times is I unclip the inside foot, use the outside foot to whip the bike around the corner. And I know it's drastic measures, but you gotta get around them somehow. Well, there you have it folks, Cornering 102. Thank you for joining us on trail today. And thanks for your comments because they really help me know what you're interested in and what you wanna learn more about. So definitely keep them coming. We're gonna do a couple more of these videos over the season, touching on some bike skills. So make sure to subscribe. Don't wanna miss out on any progression sessions. As for me, it's time to clean this dirty bike. <laughs>